So an important reaction in water is the self-ionization of water. It's an equilibrium reaction in which hydronium and hydroxide are produced uh, from water itself. And this is uh, the reaction we mentioned earlier. So water is behaving as both an acid and a base. Now, if you look at this reaction, you think about the equilibrium constant and writing it, right? you recognize H2O liquid doesn't show up. And so what you end up getting is concentration of hydronium times the concentration of hydroxide. This is also known as the ion product for water. It's just an old-fashioned term for I have these two ions and I'm multiplying them together. Uh, so, anyways, uh, this turns out at room temperature to have a value of about 1 times 10 to the minus 14. And your book acknowledges, as do many people who do this kind of stuff, that's a pretty good value to use all the time. It's not, if you got to be really, really precise, uh, you should look that value up or calculate that value uh, for different temperatures. Now, um, If you also think about this, right, you can look at it and say, oh, well, I can probably, just like you do ice tables, you can probably figure out the uh, concentration of hydronium and hydroxide in pure water at room temperature. And so you can. You can actually just set up uh, an ice table like that, and you say... If you initially have zero, no ionization takes place, right? Then you can you can write that well. The change is going to be x and x, and so this will be x and x. And what you recognize is that Kw, in addition to being equal to one times seven minus fourteen, is just equal to x times x, or x squared. So what you can write is that the square uh, x is going to be the square root of Kw or the square root of, much bigger, 1.00 times 10 to the minus 14. And that ends up being 1.00 times 10 to the minus 7. And you should also recognize, while this is the concentration of hydronium, it is the concentration of hydroxide in pure water as well. And we'll learn this term, pH. We'll, uh, it's based on the log of that number. But the water, the pure water when um, you allow the self-ionization to take place, we'll have a pH of 7. Um, that means it has both a hydronium ion concentration at 10 to the minus 7 and a hydroxide ion concentration at 10 to the minus 7. And it's considered to be neutral because those two are balanced. And don't get that confused with like neutralization reaction. That just means the hydronium and hydroxide that you put into the solution have canceled each other out in essence. But this is neutral for the amount of hydronium that's actually in the solution. All right. So yeah, hydronium concentration in pure water is uh, 1.00 times 10 to the minus 7. Now, you can also use uh, the KW expression to calculate uh, one value from another. So, for example, it says if the hydronium concentration is 1.35, calculate the hydroxide ion concentration. So, if KW is equal to the concentration of hydronium times the concentration of hydroxide, then I can say that the concentration of hydroxide is equal to K. W over um, 1.35 times 10 to the minus third. And uh, that comes out to be 7.41 times 10 to the minus 12. Okay, so that would be your hydroxide ion concentration in molarity. And so kind of a weird thing to think about for that maybe is a new idea to you, but there's always hydronium and hydroxide in a solution. If you take and you add hydronium to water, all that does is suppresses this reaction. So if I add hydronium, it'll shift it to the right, and it reduces the amount of hydroxide that is present in the solution. It turns out, because of this self-ionization reaction, hydronium and a hydroxide are always related to each other by this KW expression. 
All right, so what I want to do next is talk a little bit about the relationship between uh, acid strength and acidity. And uh, acid strength is really defined by the acid ionization reaction that I've shown here. HA re represents a generic acid, so it could be HCl, H2SO4, or HNO3, it could be any, any acid. And when it's combined with water, it acts as an acid and donates a proton to the water and produces hydronium and A minus. And Ka always has sort of this general, for all acids, has this general form of hydronium times the conjugate base of the acid divided by the concentration of the acid, like this. Acid strength is really how big that number is. So if I say, oh, it's a strong acid, that number is big. So for HCl, it's on the order of 10 to the 7th. So what is that, like 10 million? It's a pretty big number. What that actually means is when I put um, uh, hydrochloric acid in water, it essentially 100% ionizes. It's not really an equilibrium in this sense because it is just completely ionized. Um, but how much hydronium is produced is really what we mean by acidity so we say acid strength is related to ka how far it can push an equilibrium to the right basically and then acidity acidity of a solution is just really based on how much hydronium is in the solution or how much can be produced in the solution all right so with those in things in mind let's look at some ka values acid ionization constants for some different acids your book has uh, several much more complete uh, versions of this table i just picked a few out just to give some representation so hcl like i said is 10 to the 7th and hbr and hi actually are stronger but hf is a weak acid so strong acids have very large equilibrium constants and uh, basically when you look there's a table in the back of your book when you look in the table for acid ionization constants uh, what you'll find is none of the strong acids are listed they're all considered to be uh, completely ionized or 100 percent ionized so we'll talk about what that means when we do some calculations in a second um, but hf is weak hcn is weak these are all examples so hydrofluoric acid hydrocyanic acid uh, hypochlor hypochlorous acid and um, cyanic acid uh, are all weak. So which of these is the strongest of the weak acids? So comparing these, right? Again, this is talking about acid strength. Well, the largest value is the strongest acid. So if you wanted to organize them from strongest to weakest, uh, what you would do is you'd go like, well, the biggest one is, let's see... 6 times 10 to the minus 4, so this is strongest. And then uh, the weakest is easy, like that. This is, uh, sorry, this is 4, and this is 3. And I'm just looking at exponents, and then 2 times 10 to the minus 4, that's number 2. So that's how you could rank them from strongest to weakest. Now, honestly, that's not a... a very straightforward because you got to look at a lot of different things. You got to look at the exponent, you got to look at the number, and then you're trying to do comparisons. And so what they've come up with is something called a uh, a log notation. It's called power notation. So pKa is equal to negative log of the Ka value. So what I'm going to do real quickly is calculate these ones, show you how it's done, and then I'll just kind of fill the rest in. So what I'm going to do is get the pKa of HF. So I would say pKa is equal to negative log of 6.8 times 10 to the minus 4. And then I'll get the calculator back, sorry. <clears throat> so I'll go uh, 6.8 uh, times 10 to the 4 negative, Oops, negative, like that. Oh, I missed the 8. Let me go back. Let me just clear it and start over. 6.8 E4 negative. I'll take the log of that. And then I'll change the sign. Which a lot of times people just don't even change the sign. They just write the number down. So 3.16749. 3.16749. So for HF, it's 3. 
seven six one four nine and one of the things I wanted to point out to you too when I do this calculation is that when you take the log of the number the significant figures are in the decimal place so this is two significant figures here so to get two you have to look at these that's two significant figures there three the three right just represents the exponent of 10 right so the seven six one four nine actually represents the number so the pka for this is i'll just write it here 3.76 like that so now what i'm going to do is i'll go ahead and do it for all of them and i'll just sort of write them down and then we'll look at the relationship between ph and our pka and k uh, ka all right, so as I was going through it, I recognized I had the answers down here, and I always like to do a couple and check, but it turns out like this one was actually wrong uh, when I did it the first time. So this comes out to 3.17. So this answer still, though, it's two sig figs. That was the point I was trying to get across. Now, you'll notice something. Uh, the largest Ka is the smallest, the largest Ka is actually the smallest PKA. So it turns out that for the pKa, stronger means a smaller number. So it's a stronger acid if the pKa is lower. And, and actually, when you're just looking at numbers like this, these are a lot easier to compare, right? Like this is 3.17, this is 3.7. So if you're thinking of strongest to weakest, you're going from 1, 2, 3, and four and just a little bit easier and that's one of the reasons why pkas get used and there's some other properties of pkas that make them it's useful to have it uh, listed that way so what we're going to do now is going to practice and write the bronsted lowry reactions for hclo or and hcno with water and what i'd like you to do is you basically i'll show you the first one then we'll pause and i'll let you guys do the next one so hclo now the ClO minus, that's what actually is A minus in this reaction. So HClO plus H2O. Now these are going to be aqueous. Now these will be liquid. We'll make hydronium. And that's aqueous. Plus uh, ClO minus hypochloride ion like that. And this will also be aqueous. All right. Now if you're just want to be generic about these things which a lot of people do uh, this is why i said clo minus would be a minus a lot of people will write this as h a this is the generic reaction i showed earlier plus h2o is in equilibrium with h3o plus plus a minus and it's just a little less writing and again i use this squiggly to indicate like it's aqueous and then i would put an l next to the wa water because it's liquid okay so go ahead and do the same reactions for HCNO with water. All right, so that was what the reaction would look like. So hopefully you were able to do that. It also turns out that um, bases can be represented by KBs. So you have acid represented by KAs and you have bases represented by KBs. Um, the KB expression is perhaps what you would expect it to be. It's the base plus water makes um, the conjugate acid plus hydroxide. And if you write the equilibrium constant expression, the base ionization constant, it's going to be HB times OH minus divided by B. And again, leaving the water out because water is in the liquid state. Some examples of KB values. Uh, NH3 is a base, uh, HCO3 minus is the conjugate base of carbonic acid, but it is also a base, and it has a KB value associated with it. And CH3, NH2, this is known as methylamine, is also it's an amine base, it has a KB that looks like this. So um, it turns out oxygen, uh, it, the 2 minus oxide ion is actually an extremely strong base and it has a, PKA, a PKB somewhere above 10 to the 22nd, although it's very hard to measure once things get that big. So I just thought that was kind of a cool one. It's a dibasic ion, so it can actually pick up two hydrogens. It's one of the few bases that does that. 
So if you're going to organize these from strongest to weakest, again, what you'd have to do is look at the exponents and the numbers. But in this case, uh, we can just look at exponents. So 10 to the 21st, uh, 22nd, this is the strongest, right? Um, if we're going to include the, let's see, we're going to look at NH3. Oh, um, the methylamine is number two, right? And then let's see, the next one would be ammonia, which would be number four or three gosh i can't count or do anything today and then number four would be uh bicarbonate ion hco3 minus okay so if you're just looking at the bottom three and you're calculating the kbs nh3's kb is four point again you would calculate it like pkb is equal to the negative log of the concentration of the base right so or sorry gosh craziness of the kb so what you get is, for example, for NH3, you would say pKb is equal to negative log of, and then it's 1.76 times 10 to the minus fifth. Mechanically speaking, it's the same as doing a pKa, uh, and you'll get 4.75 for that one, 4.75, and then three sig figs, so four is what I have in my little notes to the side here. Uh, 2.3 times 10 to the minus 8, that pKb is going to be 7.638. Uh, uh, sorry, 7.64. Got to round it to two significant figures because there's only two here. And then 4.4 times 10 to the minus 4 would be 3.36. And again, same trend, right? Strongest base has the lowest uh, pKb, and then the weakest base has the highest pKb. So C uh, bicarbonate ion is the strongest of the bases listed here. Okay, so what we're going to do next is write some Bronsted-Lowry reactions, acid-base reactions for ammonia with water. And we're assuming that ammonia will act as a base and that uh, oxide will act as a base. So uh, again, you start off, you just say NH3 plus H2O. This is a liquid. Everything else is aqueous. And then you have to think about ammonia or the nitrogen acting as the base and so what happens right it's the proton acceptor and so you can write the products let's go ahead and do the same thing with oxide and water uh, but when you do it just do one proton at a time and when you try it you'll know what i mean when you try it so i'll go ahead and pause and then uh, when i when you start back up uh, i'll have all the answers on the screen okay so uh, perhaps you see why I said uh, on the bottom ones to do one at a time. Uh, but it gets funny when you, you get to the last one. So anyways, NH3 uh, becomes NH4, pulls up proton off the water, so you get OH-. minus. Uh, you can write the generic reaction just by, by saying B plus H2O makes HB plus OH-. minus. Uh, again, that's a KB for ammonia. And then for the oxide, it would be OH minus, uh, O2- minus plus H2O makes OH- minus and OH-. Minus. And if you try to go one more with that, you just end up getting the same thing so it's kind of not happening okay so that's why i put a little smiley face so you just do one at a time and you end up with two hydroxides over here so this is a very strong base it sort of rips the uh, hydrogen off the water and produces two hydroxides all right so just like we represented uh peak uh k KAs by PKAs and KBs by PKBs. Uh, when we start talking about the acidity and basicity of a solution, uh, we can do the same thing for hydronium and hydroxide. So the pH is the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration. Well, I got this new trick. And then, oh, it doesn't work. Oh, there we go. The... Uh, if you wanted to calculate the pH, what you do is do that. If you want to get back to hydronium concentration, that's 10 to the minus pH. And for the OH minus, right, you can do the exact same type of relationships to go between pOH and OH. 
So what I want to do, because there's a lot of these, I want to summarize all these reactions. Uh, I'll come back to that in a second. I want to summarize all these equations that we use for describing uh, pH and pOH. Okay, so first of all, uh, one relationship is just pH is equal to negative log of the hydronium concentration. And that re represents the acidity of a solution. And then pOH is equal to negative log of the hydronium concentration, or the hydroxide ion concentration, similar definition. And then if you do the anti-log functions to go back, then you want the H3O plus, that's going to be equal to um, 10 to the minus pH. The minus being that you have to carry you have to carry this value back over to the other side when you s solve this equation. So, um, and then the concentration of hydroxide is equal to the negative, sorry, 10 to the negative uh, pOH. Now, there are a couple of more relationships that you already know, or at least one other that you already know. And that's this one, that, that KW is what ties these two values together. Like that. And it turns out there's yet another one, and, and that's actually what I w wanted to show you here. And that's what, what's happened if happens if you take the negative log of both sides of this equation, because you get another very useful relationship. Now we know that KW is equal to 1.00 times 10 to the minus 4, teen, sorry, gosh, I don't know what's wrong with my brain today. And then you can write this, I'm going to take the negative log of KW, that's going to turn out to be 14. Because negative log of 1 times 10 to the minus 14 will just return uh, 14, and then you change the sign. Okay, and then the right side of the equation, that's going to be equal to the negative log of the hydronium times the hydroxide ion concentration like this. Now, if you have two... Not two um, variables, let's say A and B, and you take the log of them, that's actually equal to the log of the sum of the logs of the individual values. So for example, this becomes negative log, and I'll put this in parentheses now, hydronium plus the negative log of the hydroxide. So a product in the log is the sum of the logs of the two numbers that you took the product of. Oh, sorry, there's no negative here. And I'm going to distribute the negative. So I have negative log of hydronium minus the log. Plus, let me do it like this because it'll, it'll make more sense when I do the next step. Plus minus log of hydroxide like that. So what is this? Right? That's pH. And this is pOH. So what I have is that four, pH plus pOH equals 14. So if you have the pH of a solution, you can calculate the pOH of it just by subtracting from 14. So these are all related to each other. So I'm going to show you this sort of uh, diagram uh, and help you put it in place. And then we'll do some... put the the equations in place and then we'll do some calculations based on the equations. Okay, so it looks a little complicated at first, but what I have here is the pH-POH relationship. So if you have pH and you want pOH, you, the easiest way to go is to just use the this equation up here. On the other hand, notice if you have hydronium 
and you want hydroxide or vice versa, the quickest way to do that is to use this equation where you just say, for example, if you have the hydroxide and you want the hydronium, you just take Kw divided by the hydroxide. And you recognize that these two num these these expressions look very similar in some ways simply because they are part of the same equation in different form. Now, if you have the OH and you want to get to the POH, right, then you'll use the POH equation. If you want to go back, then you use the antilog version of that equation. And similar for hyd hydronium and pH. And so you notice this makes like a circle. So let, let's say that you're like here. And you want to get POH. Well, that one's easy. You're just going to go to the right like this. But it turns out, I mean, and you can just prove this to yourself. If you, want, you can go all the way around like this, too. I don't recommend it because it's just a waste of a lot of time. It takes three calculations to do what one should, right? But if you're, let's say you're at hydronium and you need POH. Well, there's actually two ways to go. You can go like this. Or you can go like this. And which way you go doesn't really matter. It just depends on what you're most comfortable with. Turns out, most of the time, people will take this upper route simply because, right, you get the pH. And once you have the pH, you just subtract it from 14 to get the pOH. If you're starting here and you go the other way, well, then you have to use the Kw expression. And then you have to use the pOH expression. And it's just, it's a little bit more like complicated math. It's just a lot easier to just go the other way. And that's what most people actually do. Um, so anyways, there's a lot of ways to do these. I'm just going to show you one on this next uh, example slide. All right, so here is a grid and we're going to fill it all in. You're just given the pH of a solution or the hydronium ion concentration and you need to figure out what all the other values are. So for example, I want to go from hydronium to pH, right? And so when you're looking at this, the easiest way to go from hydronium to pH is just to use a negative log, right? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to say um, negative log of, oh sorry, I should put pH is equal to the negative log of 1.35 times 10 to the minus third. And you run that in your calculator and you'll, and you'll get, again, this is three significant figures here. So you'll get um, 2.870. And now that I've done that, if you need to get the pOH, all you have to do is subtract that from 14. So you're going to say pOH is equal to 14 minus the pH, and then uh, that'll come out to be 11.130 um, with three sig significant figures. And I just took this like 14 as being 14.000. I'm just treating it as if, as if it was exact, even though it's not really. And if I want the hydroxide ion concentration, again, there's a couple of ways to do it. I could do K. I could do this Kw expression and use the hydronium expression that I had. Or I could use my pOH and do the anti-log and I can get the hydrox hydroxide concentration as well. So um, what's easiest doesn't really matter. It's kind of up to the person. So what I'm going to do is just say hydroxide minus is equal to 10 to the minus pOH, so it's 11.130. And that gives me a value of 7.41 times 10 to the minus 12, like that. Okay, so go ahead and do the next row. I'll pause it, I'll give you a chance to pause it actually, and then when you start it, there'll be the answers. All right, so those are the values filled in. Um, again, two significant figures. Use the same set of equations, basically. I just picked equations off of here. So, for example, uh, I have 9.35 is my pH. So 14 minus uh, the pH give, gave me my pOH. And then I use the anti-log function. So this would be, right, hydronium is 10 to the minus 9.35 and that gave me 4.5 times 10 to the minus 9. 